the one, first of all, you need more, you need enough brushes so it doesn't become that much of an issue. Um, but let's say the one brush you really want, or all the brushes that you've been using, all have been red painted, and now you're going to paint a blue sky. And um, then, you know, what we're doing this, well, probably good to, to lay down thick paint, but if let's say you want to like scrub in, <coughs> then your red's going to come out into that blue sky. And so that's the one thing I have paint thinner for. So occasionally I will clean that brush thoroughly if I really need to. Then that whole thing of paint, of, 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 of oil, um, about every six months or so, three months, depending, you know, when, start, when it starts to get cooky, is I just empty the whole thing out, I pour it into a container, let the, um, the pigments settle out, pour the oil from the top, and then they can reuse the oil as a medium, and the sediment, the sediment underneath I save for recycling day, toxic waste recycling day, and I take it to uh, toxic waste recycling. So you can kind of recycle it like you would turf. Yeah, in that way. Um, the, um, um, and then, so I take the whole thing about, and then I will clean my brushes with soap and water. Like every six months I'll clean with soap and water just to start, all, start fresh, start over again, and then the whole thing starts over again. Now, paint comes, there are two ways that paint, pigments are either, for the most part, slight exaggeration, opaque or transparent. Um, and obviously, there's a spectrum in between there, but basically they can be opaque and transparent. I have a, a transparent mixture I made here of a purplish black, and if I had more, of, and the reason I'm going to other colors here is because this palette, as much as I like it, it's a fairly <coughs> opaque palette. White's opaque, yellow ochre's opaque, most red oxides are opaque, there are some more transparent ones. And um, so, because I want to demonstrate transparency, I'm going to, what pigments were you using? I'm just using uh, ultramarine and a magenta. What is it? Phthalo violet, it's called. <coughs> now, let's say I want to put a the glaze down. I want it to be smooth. When I was a little boy. Not that little, but when I was in college, I used to paint. I was, I was kind of an I was impressionist. I painted really rough, and my mother would say, "Don't you can't you paint smooth?" <laughs> and uh, because she looked at you know she was looking at Ang, she said, well, "All the old masters painted smooth. Why can't you paint smooth?" Well, now I know how to paint smooth, but she's dead. Oh, oh. <laughs> 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 What? It sounded a little wicked. <laughs> it does. It's it's wicked Tony. because life sucks, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. my fault. She sees what you're doing. She sees what I'm doing, yes. So I want everybody to paint smooth now for my mother. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so now I have an opaque mixture, a light opaque mixture that I'm putting next to this. So you're all about next to, huh? Largely, a lot yeah. of next to, a lot of next to, when you're doing this kind of painting, next to, but in a minute I'm gonna do some sort of super position, but I usually only superimpose uh, wet over dry. Okay. Not entirely next to it, there's, there's painted next, you know, take some over there. Well, I wasn't being critical. No, but, <laughs> no, but there's something to, you know, there, there is, painting wet into wet is, 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 is a valid thing to do, and there, and there is a time and place for it. made a transition not only in color and value, in hue and value, but we also made a transition in paint quality from transparent to opaque. <coughs> and that's something that's really important in painting flesh. If you look at someone, look at look at somebody in, in this light, it's kind of a weird light, but even in this lighting, um, if you look in the shadows, you get a sense of of the light not the, of looking into the shadow. Whereas the light areas, the light's bouncing off the surface. It's a, it is really is a, it's not merely a convention. It really is an optical fact that that the, the shadows are have this transparency and the lights have an opacity. I'm 
paint fairly thin. You don't have to paint thin. It's not, this is not, what I'm talking about here is not about painting thin. It's because uh, you can then, you know. Remember your mother. Hmm? Remember your mother. Well, I'm not forgetting my mother. <laughs> For lab models, or do you paint from pictures sometimes? Horses. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do I have? I, 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 I pay for photographs a lot. I, I have a. I think people insist on painting from life are purists. Hmm. <laughs> I say that as an insult. <laughs> <Purists>. <laughs> Fumes that really do it. <coughs> okay. Now, those are some simple things about a more direct painting. E in even painting, did the paint down there? Even painting um, with transparency and opacity can be done directly with with side by side paint without superimposition. Um, significant way of painting, a, a very common way of painting, useful way of painting, is um, superimposed painting, where, you, where the layers, one layer goes over another layer to make another thing. Here we have some spheres. They were originally purely black and white, but then each time I demonstrate, a little more color stays on. I'm going to take these transparent colors I've already mixed here. Transitional area, we have the transparent glaze. We have opaque color in the background. <coughs> opaque color um, is less energetic than glazing. Um, it glazing happen with, with glazing. You have a transparent layer that, no matter how smooth you get on, the particles are in the medium, suspended in it, and they literally the colors floating over the underpainting. Um, opaque colors, you're only seeing the the top surface, the light bounces directly, so it doesn't penetrate in. So opaque colors are are naturally quieter, calmer, less energetic than glazed colors. So they're better for backgrounds. 
it, things like rest in them. Now, of course, when I say then the highlights on a, on a face would then be opaque, you say, well, but, but that's in the foreground, and therefore, obviously, spatial clues are complex. There are lots of, and, and they, they work in harmony with each other. So all else being equal, an opaque color is gonna be further away, but if it's on, if you put a blob of white on the tip of somebody's nose to make a reflection, it's obviously going to be near. So it's not all, so all else being equal, yes, um, opaque colors recede, but we have other spatial clues they can be used to pull forward.